Morning, kiddos. We're going to continue reading our story. Um, when we had left off, they had just found out that they had to leave um, because they still owed taxes on the house. And that was after he would met that fox that could talk. So let's find out what happens from there. My mom sat next to me. What are you talking about? You don't even like it here. All I could do was look at her and plead with my eyes. Don't give me that look, mister. I already feel bad enough as it is. I put a hand on her shoulder. It's not your fault, I assured her. She wiped her nose. So I was thinking we could go to the farmer's market tomorrow, tomorrow morning and sell some eggs. It'll be fun. I used to do it in the summers every Saturday with my grandma. She paused and smiled at me. This is our only chance to do it together. There was a sparkle in her eyes. She looked excited about it. I couldn't disappoint her. Sure, Mom, we can do that. She stood up, wrapped her arms around me. It's a shame, really. She looked out the window. She looked out the kitchen window into the yard. I had some of the best times of my life here. I wondered if she had ever seen any talking animals there. I wanted to ask her about the fox so bad, but I couldn't for two reasons. One was the fox told me not to. He didn't threaten me. He was trying to protect himself. The other was I didn't want my mom to think I was losing my mind. Did you have any homework? She asked. My stomach churned when I thought about the paper due in Miss Cox's class. I consider myself a writer but I didn't have a best friend to write about. I would have to be about my mom. Not a smart move for a new kid like me. Shane and Sam would tease me all year about it. I couldn't believe he had told me to write his paper. I have to write something for English class, I told her. It wasn't a lie, and it kept me from having to explain everything that had happened in school. Okay, she said, you should go ahead and do that. We may not have a lot of free time this weekend. I agreed with her and stood up, to head for my room. Just a second, mister, my mom commanded. What would you like for dinner? I didn't have an appetite. My head was swirling with so many thoughts it began to hurt. I'm gonna lie down for a while. I'm not hungry. She nodded her head. Come get me if you need anything. I jumped into my bed. As soon as I closed my bedroom door, the mattress was so lumpy that I wasn't, sh I was sure there were bricks inside of it. It wasn't uncomfortable to lie on, but after eight hours of sleep, it always left my back in pain. There was no reason to complain about it. We were only going to be here for a few more days. I was exhausted and I needed a power nap before I wrote anything. Every time my eyes shut, I could see the fox's blue eyes staring back at me. I wondered if I would ever see him again. The next chapter is Friday night. I jumped out of my sleep when I heard a ruckus outside. The room was dark, so I knew the sun had gone down. I looked at my watch and saw it was midnight. I only felt half awake and my back was killing me. I wish I could sleep on the floor, but that place had roaches that came out at night. I had heard them crunch under my feet when I got up to use the bathroom the night before. They disappeared the moment I turned the lights on. I jumped again when, I, when a door banged shut from outside. The chicken coop! I suddenly realized I did forget to lock it. I hopped out of the bed and shuddered every time I felt a crunch under my shoes. I walked down the hall and into the kitchen. My mom was nowhere to be found and I didn't expect her to be. She was sound asleep. I grabbed a flashlight off the kitchen counter and walked out the back door and into the yard. The outhouse looked scary in the dark, like a haunted house. The moon, the night was shaped like a trimmed fingernail, not giving off much light. I flicked the flashlight on and marched toward the chicken coop. I had to lock it before the chickens got out and put themselves in danger. I dropped the flashlight when it focused on two blue eyes. The fox was walking out of the chicken coop. I was happy to see him again, 
But what was he doing in there? You don't want to go in there for 10 to 15 minutes, the fox said. And you might want to light a candle. He waved a paw in front of his nose like something stank. And it did. The putrid odor, odor made me feel sick. The fox was covered in something wet and slimy. I knew exactly what it was. Old Nelly, I whispered. The fox shook its body rapidly from side to side so the rotten egg yolk flew off of him in every direction. That crazy old chicken threw her eggs at me. She attacked me for no reason. I suspected old Nelly had her reasons. She had never thrown her eggs at me. Maybe she got nervous, I explained. You shouldn't be in there at night. The fox smiled and said, I like you, Jonah. I think we're going to be good friends. I couldn't help but smile back. I didn't feel, it didn't feel weird talking to the fox, and he was nice. Wait a second, I said. How did you know my name? And please call me Joe. The fox turned and walked towards the fence, and he jumped that he had jumped over earlier that day. The other human with you yelled your name earlier. She said something about the outhouse. That made sense. Where are you going, I asked. I have so many things I want to ask you. The fox stopped walking and faced me. I need to get some dinner. He looked back at the chicken coop. I missed my last meal. He shook his head like he was disappointed. And there's a river down the road. I need to wash up. I had to agree with him on the last part. That's a good idea. You smell like farts. He huffed and crouched on all four paws and raced out of the yard. I locked the chicken coop and went back into the house. I felt a lot better after talking with the fox. I wondered how old he was. Probably the same age as me, 11, maybe a year or two younger. And I wondered once again when I would see him next. He liked the chicken coop. I'd try to meet him there again tomorrow. I turned the kitchen I turned the kitchen and living room lights on. Not a roach in sight. I was wide awake now, and it was the perfect time to write my paper for school. I grabbed two sheets out of my back part, backpack and number two pencil. That was funny. Number two made me think of the outhouse. And that's where we're going to stop today, kiddos. I will see you again soon.